Rubber guard does not work. Or could it be that you don't really understand the fundamentals and the principles that make the rubber guard so effective? When the rubber guard does fall apart, it's usually for one of a couple of reasons or maybe a combination of a couple of reasons. The first reason is that you're trying to do it from the closed guard or that you classify the rubber guard as part of closed guard. Now listen, you can play a really good rubber guard from a closed guard scenario. I've seen it done a lot and that is where most people think about it. I tend to think of the rubber guard as a derivative of the butterfly guard. It's done with an overhook when I'm already on my side. If I'm on my back and I've got my closed guard around, look, I can even start on my side. I can have everything in my favor. And when I go to my rubber guard, if this foot is out here on the outside of the hip, then it's pretty easy for her just to stack into me and put me flat. And now I've still got the rubber guard and I can still do a lot of cool stuff from here. But this is where you start thinking, well, you need to be flexible to do that. But for me, the best way to play the rubber guard and the easiest way to start learning it is to start from the butterfly. Because now, if she flattens me out, keep me, keep me flat, I can adjust my hips and get on my side, keeping those butterfly hooks in place. And just the act of getting on my side can start to open up the inside space for me sometimes if they post that elbow a little too much. Let's talk about the importance of this overhook and how it's to be played. Most of the time when people think about an overhook, they think about grabbing, pulling in with the overhook. Uh, there's a, definitely a place for that, um, if both in the butterfly guard and in your wrestling. Definitely there's a time to pull this overhook tight. Generally speaking though, my overhook is played here. I got kind of a relaxed hand, right? My tension is coming through the pinch of my elbow down into my ribs, which makes a frame now against her. So when she tries to push back in, when I combine that with my hip movement, with my butterflies, it makes it really hard for her to flatten, like go ahead and flatten me out. It makes it really hard for her to flatten me out. I can take this out and put it in the hip now and use it as a post. Look at all this inside space I have just from making that simple movement. So in summary, playing from your clothes guard, definitely doable. But this is where you're gonna need to dip into your flexibility and the deep rubber guard knowledge. Playing from your butterfly guard, you can kick space off, fire and flip and stay on your side. And even here from this New Jersey position, which is where she has one butterfly hook stuffed, if she tries to flatten me out here, I can kick and stay on my side. Another major reason that people struggle with the rubber guard is they just don't know when to bail. Like if you're starting to get your guard passed and you're still holding on to the rubber guard, hoping that some dork you watched on YouTube is gonna be able to save you with his magical moves, it's not. You gotta know when to bail when you're playing your rubber guard. And it's an easy thing to tell when it's time to bail. It's when you're not winning the inside space battle anymore. Let me define the inside space battle for you. If I can keep my knee, open this, closer to me than her arm or her leg, then I'm winning the inside space. If she can keep either her arm or her leg closer to me than my own knee is, then she's winning the inside space. She can win it this way with her elbow on the ground and I can't get back inside. She could slide her elbow over the top and she could create problems or she could even slide that knee over into position and create, and now you're really toast if you don't know what to do, okay? So the timing on this thing is I'm looking to win the inside space. If she does win it, okay? So she's got it here. It's still a fight a little bit. She's in stage one. She starts, to get into, she starts to get into stage two right here. I need to be thinking about clearing the head immediately. Like if I wait until she's already got this over into position and I go to try to clear, she's just gonna flatten me out and pass my guard. And then 
your coach is going to yell at you and say, I told you that Eddie Bravo crap. You know what I mean? So when you feel that your opponent starts to take the inside space, you got to clear the head immediately. So look how I just bring this frame around and put it on the other side. I don't come in here and start ripping on my foot again, okay? The idea is not to rip my foot as close as possible to my face. The idea is to keep a down pressure here. So you see that the inside of my knee is pressing towards the floor and there's weight on her. So even from right here, if I just lift my hip off the ground a little bit using this pressure posture up, that's not easy, right? It doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's not easy. And when I bring this frame around and I put this in her collarbone, when she tries to press back to me, I'm able to, to keep a large portion of the angle that I've created for myself. Angle is offense. You're never gonna play good offense in any combat sport without good angle. It's true in boxing, it's true in kickboxing, it's true in wrestling, it's true in jujitsu. Need a good angle. And this frame, this chill dog position, offers me an opportunity to have a good angle. If now she starts to win this space by getting to the inside, go ahead, getting to the inside, I have to, before that happens or as that happens, rewind, as that happens, I gotta, go ahead, I gotta get on the other side of her head. And now look, I'm not actually using that much flexibility to do that. I'm using a portion, a degree of flexibility, I would say, but not a ton, not any more than it takes to do a butterfly stretch. It's not like I'm, she's buried into me here, like come close to, it's not like I've got a bad frame and she's buried into me and I'm trying to rip this over. Now I can do it, but I don't have to do it. And usually when I have to do that, it doesn't work out anyway. I secure an angle. I make sure that when she starts to win this space, I can already be here. Now look, I just get my toes out of the way. So I move my arm with this Kung Fu move and I reach over her head. And even if she buries her chin to hide from the go, -Go Plata, I'll put that grip on her face and start lifting and creating space for the go-go clinch here. And man, honestly, even if you've gotten this far, even if they go ahead and clear the knee at this point, go ahead, you can start getting belly down on them and you can take them for a ride right there with a very powerful shoulder lock. Big thanks to X Marshall for sponsoring this video. X Marshall is a really fast growing MMA brand, a lot of fun designs, unique gear. X Marshall believes the better you look in training, the better you're gonna feel and perform. They're super passionate about martial arts, combat sports, the whole community. So they sponsor a ton of athletes and creators such as Gabriel Varga, Jedi Does Jiu Jitsu, Jordan Teaches Jiu Jitsu, Tyler Spangler, and many more. X Marshall believes in bringing fun and personality to your training with their growing collection of rash guards, shorts, streetwear, and training equipment. And I've partnered up with X Marshall to give you this sweet new BMAC rash guard. It's only available on their site. They're now running some amazing sales with up to 60% off for some of their products. Show them some support. Follow the link in the description and use my discount code BRANDON10 to get an additional 10% off your order and grab new gear and make yourself stand out in training. Thanks again to X Marshall. Another big reason that people struggle with the rubber guard is that they're not skipping any steps. They're trying to go through the whole process from start to finish. And sometimes they gotta go backwards to get to one of those steps. Very often the case is gonna be, especially if you're starting from your butterfly guard, that you can skip half the steps at the front right off the bat. Traditionally, these are the steps of the rubber guard. We start with our opponent's hands on our chest and we get out to a hip and gable grip behind the neck, knee comes to the face and we hook. We call this position mission control, okay? From there, even if she flattens me out, I take this hand and I go up underneath the inside to clear the arm. We call that the zombie. And now this position is New York. From New York, I clear the head and I move into chill dog. From chill dog, I make the kung fu move and I kick out to the omoplata style positions. If you can skip steps, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So for example, if I'm playing with my butterfly and she starts to come in, she wants the underhook, she wants to flatten me, I fall to my side, 
and I whip into position real quick. We call this position New Jersey. It's the same thing as New York, except with a stuffed butterfly hook. Go ahead. Except the butterfly hook is stuffed. All right. I've been able to, I skipped the initial process of the rubber guard here, which is I start flat on my back, I hip out, I get up to mission control, and then I have to zombie. I skipped all of that just by playing from the butterfly guard and staying on my side. I've got the overhook trapped already, I've got the leg hooked already, and I'm now we're in the inside space battle. So whoever wins that battle is gonna be the one that advances offensively. Here's another example of how to skip steps in the rubber guard. She goes to flatten me out, and immediately I fire and flip. That looks like it takes a crazy amount of flexibility, but it really doesn't. I'm just sitting in the same position I would be in if I had my legs crossed watching TV. By far the number one question that I get asked about rubber guard and the number one concern that I hear from people who wanna learn rubber guard is, do I need to be very flexible to play rubber guard? And the answer is honestly, yes. But you don't need an uncommon amount of flexibility to play almost all of the rubber guard. If you wanna be able to do what Ben Eddy does, if you wanna be able to do what Boogie does, then these are exceptional athletes with really incredible attributes. They're able to do things that even I can't do. But I can play, I mean, pretty much every part of the rubber guard with just flexibility that I earned through stretching. But right here, I've skipped mission control. I've skipped New York, clearing the head, kung fu move, all of that, just hold, by holding onto the back of the neck and skipping straight into this position here. We're gonna start setting up the go-go clinch or the go-go plata from here. Regardless of what level of flexibility you currently have, if you're gonna reach up and grab your foot to play rubber guard, you need to do it like this. Pay close attention to this. This is gonna help you so much. The way that most people try to grab the rubber guard is that they throw their foot up and they grab the ankle and then they start thinking about hugging the hip. This is backwards from the way I want you to think about it. Because when you do this, you start pulling on the lever right here. So you're down at the end of the lever to the knee. You're putting a lot of stress on your LCL. And as soon as you got somebody big and strong that's determined to try to pull away from this, you're gonna be putting a lot of tension right there. Okay, the way that I want you to think about it and the way I want you to move is to bring your knee to your face first. Hug the knee and then pass the leg right over into your hand. Making sure that you're hooking this way, not this way this sometimes this is valuable there's there's some utility for this but it's not as good as this this pulls the lever to the knee but this is the lever to the hip the knee joint is only made to go this way it has very little give laterally right but the hip it's not a hinge like the knee it's a ball and socket joint it has almost 360 degree rotation in it it's got movement around. So it can take pressure. It's built to take pressure in a lot of different directions. So when the knee comes up, now it's just a small pivot and my foot is right in my hand. And I don't have to reach down there and grab and pull my foot towards me. This is not what I want. If this is what you're doing in rubber guard, that's why you think you don't have the flexibility to play it because you see it as grabbing the foot. I need you to see rubber guard as a play with an overhook from butterfly guard. And if you can just change the filter through which you look at the rubber guard, then your success is gonna go through the roof with these style of techniques. If you wanna get an in-depth, very thorough look at all the things that I teach about the rubber guard, and honestly, all the things that I play from the rubber guard, you're gonna to wanna to pick up my BJJ Fanatic set. It's called Meat Hook, the Rubber Guard. It's a link in the description. And you know BJJ Fanatics always has some kind of coupon. So grab it.